Hey, so a few weeks ago I went uh, over the weekend, the long weekend, to Decorex and we went to try to find a fireplace and we didn't manage to find a fireplace. However, as we were walking through the expo hall, we came around this corner and all of a sudden we were struck by this picture. It was just like, wow. The picture is called Fearless Dreamer. It's by a guy called uh, Gerard Sneeman, amazing artist who, by complete coincidence, lives about 300 meters away from me in my estate. Now, uh, Herod, we obviously were enamored with the photo, with the picture, we bought it straight away, and Herod came on the next day to try and uh, help us find a good place for it. And I was asking him questions, very curious, you know, how do you create, what do you do, and he was taking me through his whole process, he's an amazing guy. You must check out his work, I'll include a link below so you can go see his Instagram. But anyway, one of the things I asked him is, does it ever not work? And he said, yeah, of course, it, you know, at times it doesn't work. And I said, so what do you do? He said, well, funnily enough, I just turn the canvas upside down. You know, I take it, I turn it upside down, and I look at it, and it just gives me a fresh perspective. And then I'll start maybe painting over bits of work, bits that don't work, and it gives me a whole new lens. Now, he said to me, there's another method. And he said, what a lot of artists do is they take a mirror, and they just hold a mirror to the work, and they look at the mirror through the lens, or through, they look at the work through the mirror, and it gives them a whole different look. This was actually uh, created by Leonardo da Vinci. He said the mirror is the master of the artist. Right? It's their greatest tool because it gives them the power of perspective. Now, we've all seen this before. We've all seen it when we're working. You know, when I wrote my book, I sent it to an editor who helped me uh, correct lots of problems in my you know, typos that I just didn't see when I read over the work myself. Or when I make slides, or I send it to Don Peck and my business partner because you know, he's able to see things that myself and Grant who designs the slides, we just don't pick up on because we're too close to it. Uh, Howard Mann, he always says it's very hard to read the label from inside the bottle, and that is so true. And in fact, uh, two days before I bought this piece, I was in Mauritius, we were doing some facilitation, and we'd set up this slide because we didn't want people to uh, touch the games. Now, I don't know if you can instantly spot what was wrong with the slide, but I stayed at this for half an hour and didn't notice. It was only when we sent Don the photo of us doing the handstand, that he was like, uh, guys, what's touch? Now, anyway, that aside, you've all been through this and you understand this. And we do it with our work. But what we don't do is do it with our businesses. And that's the key, is how do, we, how do we get that we can hold a mirror to our own companies? And luckily enough, that's what I've been able to do recently. We're starting the new businesses like Human Rights and Leaderspeak and Conclave. I've been able to look at uh, Missing Link, the 21-year-old business, with the outsider set of eyes. I've been able to look at it as a customer. And it's amazing how often I'll be like, wow, why do we quote like that? Or uh, when we send out that time frame, it doesn't make sense the way we do it. And we're actually able to hack our own processes because I'm able to hold a mirror to my own business. And it was only by separating myself from the day to day when Don took over and treating the business as a customer that I was able to do that. So I know it's not easy, but I think you have to find a way to look at your business from the outside. You gotta find a way to hold a mirror to your own company. Whether that means telling your staff, putting on a disguise and walking through like a customer and seeing what happens with your security guards, seeing what happens when you go to reception to ask for somebody there, uh, see everything. It's amazing how often I look at our clients and when I get to the thing that says visitors parking, it doesn't have an apostrophe, but they never notice because they don't park as visitors. And I think that's your challenge this week is how can you hold a mirror to your business? How can you look at your department or your business unit or your business the way that your customers or colleagues or peers look at you? And then ask yourself, if I was dealing with this department business for the first time, what would I hate about the process? What would I want to fix? It's been so empowering for me to be able to look at Missing Link with that lens, to be able to hold a mirror uh, to my business. Because, it, you know, Da Vinci said, the mirror may well be the master of the artist, but I think it's the master of the manager as well. And we need to find a way to use our mirror. If we can do that, I think uh, it'll give us a whole new lens and a whole new perspective on how we do business. Peace. Yow! I'm Kevin from Missing Link. Thank you so much for watching Rich's video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you very much.